Okay, guys, so we're getting further along now. What we're going to look at now are some main goals and benefits of the EMU card. Okay, so the first goal, we spoke about it briefly at the start, is going to be increased connection to our opponent. So we're going to be using all our four weapons, both hands, both legs, against one of their legs. So again, once we get this position, I'm locking up and I'm controlling this position. We'll look at this in more detail as we go along. But this is the first really uh, advantageous thing about this position because as we said, whether we link our limbs or the more uh, pieces of our body we have on his body, the harder it's going to be for him to be able to move. The next thing that's going to happen is that because of this, it's going to restrict his movement. It's going to make it more difficult for him to get away. I described at the start about how the emu guard uh, is named after the emu because they can't take a backward step. If Chris tries to take a backward step and pull his arm out, he's going to drag me along. So it's very hard for him to escape out of this position. So straight away, that versus if I'm in a position where I don't have the same degree of attachment to him, He's got far more ability to be able to use his arms to get rid of legs and move around. And he's going to have speed and he's going to have uh, options basically available to him to start to pass my guard and do whatever else he might want to do. So I can connect to him. I can restrict his movement. And then the other key point is I can control the distance. And this is super important, especially for fighting, but with, uh, especially for how we're going to look at using this position to sweep and uh, take the person's back when we look at the techniques in a few uh, videos time. So let's do a little test here. Do a like distance test. So Chris just keeps his lead foot where it is here. And I pop this out on the ground and ask him to reach forward and touch it. He hopefully can. So he reaches forward, no problem. If we say now, don't move your foot forward, and I maintain his knee behind the line of his foot here. I don't allow him to bring this forward. He goes to try and move forward to touch that. You can see how he ends up about an arm, an arm short of the target. So that turns into a very important thing when we're looking at fighting, but it also turns into an important thing with, uh, with jiu-jitsu and no gi in terms of our opponent coming down, grabbing a lapel or controlling our head or arm or something else from the top position. So with that in mind, other benefits that we get from this position is it's gonna hide our feet. It's gonna give us all of these advantages to off balance our opponent and start to look to sweep and take their back, etc. It's also gonna be a good defensive position, as we said, because it stops a person from moving around. It's gonna limit their ability to attack our feet. It's gonna limit their ability to pass the guard. And finally, it's gonna be a dual purpose of being able to use for offense and defense in, in MMA and fighting situations. So if we look at that briefly again, we're in our position. As I come up into my classic position, again, we have derivations of this that we're going to look at on my feet uh, inside here now, and they're not actually accessible for him easily to be able to get to a position where he can start to attack them. Okay, he can bring his hands down and start to grab them, but actually that's going to be what we want. Okay, so I'm going to be able to now off-balance him, and then as we'll see later on, I'm going to be able to get into what we call the front split position, and there's going to be lots and lots of sweeping and attacking opportunities from there. So it hides our feet, which gives us an advantage to avoid leg locking uh, opportunities, unlike a bunch of other open guard scenarios. Uh, and also, as I said, defensively, I can lock him up here, I can move him around, it makes it very difficult. He has to escape this position before he can start to uh, impose his offense on me. From my perspective, my offense, I can start to do this from the start because I've got great, great control. I can off balance and I can look to start to uh, uh, do all the things we're going to look at as the video progresses. And especially from an MMA perspective, as we said, if I'm here and his knee comes through the gap here, he can lean forward with his body and he can look to punch me in the face. And that's going to be poorly for him. But if I'm here and he goes to do that, and as soon as I do, I keep his knee back and behind, he literally can't touch me. So, and obviously you can see when you do this explosively, it's also very dangerous for the opponent's knee. I can hyperextend it and cause an injury there, which we have to be careful of when we're training this. But if this is a, uh, this is one of the, the key elements as to why we looked at this position uh, in detail. So the ability to control distance, the ability to negate his movement when he's moving around, uh, the ability to hide my feet, and then also uh, the, the last sort of benefit from it is I can actually use my legs, which we'll look at at the end of this video. I can use my legs to attack now. So I can use this from a MMA perspective. And again, this is uh, a different scenario to most of the time when people are attacking on the ground. If someone's fighting and they're here and they're trying to upkick, but Chris has got all the mobility in the world, he can switch past my legs and then he can punch me, etc. If I'm here and I'm actually controlling where he is, now it becomes a battle of my legs against his hands. If he can't get away from here, not only is he in a bad position, he's actually in a uh, position where I feel like I have the advantage, where my kicks are going to be devastating forwards. We'll look at that as we go along.